Nej, Måns, stanna. Good. It'll dry off when we get to camp, mate. What do you reckon? Looks okay, doesn't it? Shielded from the wind. Bit of radial heat. Looks good, doesn't it?
Lucky with the weather, aren't we, mate? Not too cold. I'll make you a nice bed in a minute. Beefy dog, beefy dog, you beefy. Mm. Are you beefy. Oh. more space. Monster's bag. And this is mine. I haven't really said too much about my sleep gear in these solo vids, but if you watched my last video, I did a full breakdown of my kit, the weight, the pack, the changes I've done. I use this mat all year round, on snow, on ice, everything. And um, it's always kept me extremely warm, even conditions as low as minus 15 and below. So uh, yeah, it's a really good mat. You know, it isn't really what I would call bushcraft. It's uh, as I've said, this is kind of my leave no trace kit where I come out, set up overnight, enjoy nature with the dog and head home again. And uh, I can just bring my gear out with me rather than chop a load of stuff down. But uh, because the dog is limited on how much he can carry and I'm limited on how much I can carry, obviously I build months something while I'm out here. 
and I brought him a sleeping bag with me too. So uh, he should be nice and toasty as well. But it's about zero degrees now, minus four tonight. It won't be that cold for him. He's uh, very much used to these conditions as low as... Crikey, he's been out in minus 33 with me and um, he's a pretty tough dog.
Camp's all organised now. It's a beautiful location. And I spent a long time processing wood. You probably wonder why you need so much wood. Well, it's not the, the amount of wood you need. It's the quality of the wood. Look at this piece here. It's like polystyrene. It looks like a nice hearty log for the fire. But that will burn down in probably 10 minutes. Less than that. You never know. So, uh, you know, I have to have quite a lot. Got some bigger bits here. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty prepared. But you may ask why I built this construction around the fire. Um, it's not just for the vanity purposes of making it look homely, although there is a lot to be said for making a camp area feel homely. If you're spending time in the wilderness and you're around predators and you have your dog with you and things like that, it's nice to feel comfortable in camp. And uh, I built this really just to absorb a lot of the heat and reflect a bit back for me. Helps with cooking too resting your pots around the stone and getting things organized and uh, it really does help contain the fire and stop it spreading but uh, there's, there's sometimes some concern with stones exploding uh, that really only happens if you have an intensely hot fire the stones are damp they go in they heat up rapidly and then they blow up because of air pockets and moisture inside when you're heating the stones slowly like I am, you generally don't run into any issues. There might be a little pop here and there a bit later on as uh, it gets really hot, but as long as you build the fire up slow, it will be fine. But interestingly enough, me and Mont saw our first um, brown bear today, probably no more than half a kilometre from our location now. We were driving down a track to get to this location, to get fairly close to it anyway. We obviously had to do a bit of hiking as always, but that's the fun of it and we were near parking and we were just driving along slowly and a brown bear was at, just at the edge of the track and all we really did was see the back end of it belting away off into the forest and um, it was a really amazing sight and it was, it was a big bear as well. It was pretty impressive and uh, you know there's not really too many issues with bears around here although there is quite a high population of bears in this location, some wolves too but uh, a hell of a lot of elk as well actually which is what they're hunting at the moment I think but um, yeah it was really amazing to see I tried to get a photo but as it always goes I grabbed my phone off the dash and started playing with it trying to shut down Spotify tried to take a shot of it and you know it was gone but uh, wow what a sight so uh, yeah I'll move my scraps of food away from camp tonight I think just to be on the safe side but uh, yeah yeah amazing sight but we're all set for the night, so uh, yeah, just gonna chill now. Cook some food, I'm hungry after processing all this wood. You're on, mate. All right, then. You are hungry, aren't you, mate?
mon site. Mouse. <laughs> Mate, your ears perked up then, didn't they? You've already had two meals today. I'll do for dinner, won't it? I don't know, I don't know. Do you want sausage too? Mouse, come on. There you go. Just wanted a bit more to eat, didn't you? Is that good, mate?
Flip a dog. Flip a dog. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. We've survived, mate. We've survived. Okay. Yep. We've survived, mate. Watch out the camera, Jesus. Right, pal. Okay, let me see, all right.
snoring like a beast last night, don't you? Mouse. Come on. I'm not putting any more wood on the fire now as I'm getting ready to leave. Just burning everything down to ashes and then I can tidy up like I've never been here. But uh, we've got a range of tree species here in the north of Sweden. We have Betula pendula. We have this tree behind me here. This is the what we call back home the Scots pine. Here they call it Swedish pine. It's a Pinus sylvestris. We also have some spruces dotted about, around. We call this Norway spruce back home, but it's his uh, Picea abies. We also have Salix as well, a, a type of willow, goat willow, they call it in the UK, or Salix capria. And there is aspen here as well too, and um, a few other species as well. Um, actually alder, I found a lot of alder here in some of the nature reserves by the sides of, um, of lakes and things. But when I'm managing my fire, I, uh, I always boil water on intense flame and I cook on ember so initially when I build the fire I build it hot and I put a lot of wood down on the ground to insulate the fire from the cold ground initially but also so that wood turns into a nice bed of insulative embers but fire management is literally a constant when you're out here in the wilderness um, I find that making a little ring of stones helps me manage the fire rather than an open fire. It allows you to concentrate the embers and retain the heat that you're looking for. It's better for when you're cooking and um, it also produces a, a bit more of a fuel efficient fire as well as um, you don't find yourself pushing all the outer sticks in 
and the embers on the outside gradually cooling off and it retracting inwards when the fire is burning down you can maintain a good bed of embers for a lot longer but this tree behind me uh, this pinus sylvestris tree um, has a lot of exposed roots and, and this is one of the roots uh, some of these roots are dead you know, a lot of the smaller ones i've just snapped this off and uh and you'll see there that this root is essentially just concentrated with with dried resin So you can see all the resin on the inside. This root is, is packed with it. Much like the one I just put on the fire that almost burst into flames immediately. And even those shavings I've taken off are valuable. But just to show you on this piece of wood here, if we use the back of the knife, we can essentially do the same thing we did with the birch. build up kind of like a feather stick but a bit more effective than that because you can use this to then get a fire going I just need to position it right because and there we go you can see it burns very violently almost like a torch even more effective than birch bark if you get a piece that's infused with this much resin and uh, if you make several of these and, and take your time collecting the roots and do the preparation required even on the coldest of winter days you will have a fire as water cannot be absorbed into the resin it's almost like a varnish as if you soak the wood in it Another tip, if you uh, want your water to boil faster, then don't clean your bottle, leave it black.
come on. Must sit. Stand up. Stand up, Moss. Anna. It's Anna. Nice and warm though, isn't it? Hey mate, ready to go? I think that's a yes. You think, Monts, that Velcro is not a new invention and that they would have thought that maybe doing proper Velcro on these cuffs would have, would have saved people a lot of faffing. Anyway, let's go. Come on, mate. I think we'll put it back to the way it was, mate. It's not looking too good for you, really. Too far forward. No, Stanna. I think that's better, yeah? I think that's better. Alright, let's go.